When the world first heard about the SR-72, many thought it was just another elaborate concept that would never work out. But with more information coming to light, it's becoming more obvious that Lockheed Martin was working on something truly revolutionary, something that would put that SR-71 to shame. So what's really going on behind the closed doors of the Skunk Works? Is it true that the next step into the future of American aviation has already been taken only in secret? Join us as we unveil the new SR-72 upgrade, a five-plus generation jet. The SR-72 Dark Star, Lockheed Martin's successor to the legendary SR-71 Blackbird, is finally emerging from the shadows. Building on the legacy of the SR-71 Blackbird, the SR-72 Dark Star is said to be part of a top-secret U.S. Air Force project to dominate the skies and project power to the enemies. Let's get some things clear about this futuristic fighter jet. But before that, let's take a glimpse at the plane about to lose its place as the Lord of the Skies, the SR-71 Blackbird. The SR-71 Blackbird is one of history's great aircraft. While operational, it was truly an amazing spy plane that broke speed record after speed record. But the SR-71 was also remarkably expensive to operate, which is why after the Cold War ended, Congress put the Blackbird spy plane to sleep. The legendary Blackbird was a long-range reconnaissance plane with remarkable performance characteristics. Equipped with two Pratt and Whitney J58 turbojet engines, this device could reach a speed of Mach 3.2 and fly at an altitude of 85,000 feet, which forced the pilots to put on spacesuits so as to not simply lose consciousness. To put into context, commercial planes are around 35,000 feet, the SR-71 was so fast that to evade surface-to-air missiles, the jet would simply accelerate to outrun missiles. The Blackbird was specialized and distinct to its very last component. The jet needed to do things no other jet could do. As a result, the SR-71 shared roughly zero commonality with any other airframe. So building, operating, and maintaining the plane also required specialized and distinct components that's expensive and logistically complicated. For example, the aircraft had the smallest radar cross-section available to Lockheed at the time of its development. So on a closer look, the Blackbird is actually an early attempt at stealth design. The SR-71 paint was a black ferret iron radar absorbing paint that radiated heat from the surface many times more efficiently than bare metal. Additionally, it reduced skin temperature, thermal stress on the airframe, and gave the Blackbird an even more menacing appearance. About 85% of the structure was made of titanium, and the rest was made of polymer composite materials. To avoid unnecessary waste, Lockheed specialists used an easily machined titanium alloy that softens at a lower temperature. But the high temperatures that arise during flight at speeds of several Mach required a special approach to the design and operation of the device. Fuselage panels were manufactured to fit only loosely with the aircraft on the ground. Proper alignment was achieved as the airframe heated up with thermal expansion of several inches. Because of this, and the lack of a fuel sealing system that could remain leak-free with the extreme temperature cycles during flight, the aircraft leaked JP-7 fuel on the ground prior to takeoff, annoying ground crews. The main sections of the SR-71 skin were corrugated rather than smooth causing aerodynamicists to jokingly call the Blackbird the Mach 3 Ford Trimotor due to the latter's peculiar corrugated aluminum skin. But this was quite reasonable for a new aircraft, since high temperatures would simply lead to splitting or twisting of the smooth skin, while the corrugated skin could expand vertically and horizontally, having increased longitudinal strength. The SR-71 was designed with the focus of being undetectable on enemy radar, and it achieved this with remarkable success. The engineers even went as far as to use cesium-based fuel additives to reduce the radar visibility of exhaust plumes. In 1974, the SR-71 set the record for the quickest flight between London and New York. In 1976, it became the fastest air-breathing manned aircraft, previously held by its predecessor, the closely related Lockheed YF-12. As of 2025, the Blackbird still holds all three world records. However, as mentioned before, this legendary Colossus wasn't all green and it soon fell victim to high cost. 
the SR-71 cost as much as $200,000 per hour to operate when all of its ancillary expenses were factored in. Part of that cost stemmed from the fact that it was a small specialized fleet. Because of the small number of jets built, 32, and its unique design, the SR-71 was a maintenance hog. It also required a specialized logistical train, particularly for its exotic fuel, which cost $18,000 per hour in 1989. At least it was this reason that became one of the cornerstones in Congress's decision to stop operating this reconnaissance aircraft. The Blackbird was initially retired in 1990, even before the fall of the Soviet Union. Eventually, however, three of the jets were reactivated by the Air Force at the insistence of Congress for a brief period between 1995 and 1998. The U.S. Air Force finally retired the SR-71 aircraft in 1998, although NASA operated the last two airworthy aircraft until 1999, after which they took their final bow and went to rest. As the years passed without any replacement for Blackbird, questions began to rise, and it was then that the talks of a hypersonic successor to the Blackbird became more and more pressing. Needless to say, the task of finding a suitable replacement was not an easy one, and it's quite understandable. According to some sources, over the years of service, the SR-71 managed to outrun more than 4,000 missiles fired at it, it operated with virtual impunity, even in the most hostile airspaces. That's what the U.S. needs to replace. Little wonder it's a difficult task. Many people believe that the first rumors about the SR-72 appeared in 2007, but the truth is that it had in fact happened in the very early 2000s when Skunk Works realized that the era of the SR-71 had come to an end and the time had come to prepare a worthy replacement for it. 2006 to 2007 are very relevant years for Lockheed engineers, mainly because in that period, they collaborated with the Aerojet Rocketdyne team and had been working on an engine capable of hypersonic speed since this time. Aerojet Rocketdyne applied their scramjet technology, supersonic combustion ramjet, to the engine design of the SR-72, since it was supposed to receive an advanced air-breathing propulsion system which would be able to work equally well not only at subsonic and transonic, but also at supersonic and even hypersonic speeds. The SR-72 is not just a fast plane. It's an entirely new concept aircraft, the first of its kind. It is designed to travel at more than 4,000 meters per hour, far greater than Mach 5. To put into context, that speed is fast enough to fly across the Atlantic Ocean in just over an hour. And unlike the Blackbird, which is manned, the SR-72 is free. It is completely unmanned and reusable, a feature many had applauded since if capable of flying through the most treacherous airspace on the planet, it won't put a pilot at risk. We're talking about a jet so fast and so autonomous, it can outrun the most sophisticated surface-to-air missile defenses. That is where the future is taking us with the development of the SR-72. But what's its actual purpose? The jet will break speed, records for sure, but it is not just about that. It is built for strategic reconnaissance, surveillance, and even attack missions deep behind enemy lines. Thanks to its hypersonic speed, the enemy in question may not even realize it was there, and a battle might be over before it even begins. The literal definition of this fighter jet is too fast to catch, too smart to stop. The SR-72 might also be used as an attack carrier for hypersonic missiles, such as the high-speed strike weapon, which is currently being developed. So this means that the plane is not just a spy in the sky, it's also a heavily armed attack drone. Talk about an eagle with advanced features. This new aircraft represents a major shift in warfare of modern day. When comparing it to other fighter jets, the word is Swap the slow and visible with the fast and stealthy. Speed goes beyond reaching a marked destination faster. It's about taking the enemy by surprise. It's about disrupting the decision-making cycle of warfare. With the new SR-72, American commanders can gather intelligence in record time or strike before an adversary even has time to react to its whizzing sound. There were speculations as to whether this futuristic aircraft was a myth of some sort but in 2013, Lockheed Martin Skunk Works finally officially confirmed the development of the SR-72 on Lockheed Martin's website, saying the son of Blackbird would fly twice as fast as its father. 
That is, at speeds up to Mach 6. The team didn't say this baselessly. They supported such a bold statement by saying that the SR-71 was developed using 20th century technology, using slide rules and paper, emphasizing that it was not controlled by millions of lines of program code and did not run on computer chips. But the SR-72, on the other hand, would be a beast of a completely different generation. Only three years later after that, Lockheed Martin CEO Marilyn Hewson came with new information that the company was on the verge of a technological breakthrough that would allow the SR-72 to not only reach Mach 6, but also build a hypersonic prototype the size of the F-22 Raptor for less than $1 billion. And just a little later, in 2018, Lockheed Martin Vice President Jack O'Banion once again confirmed the information from the 2013 article, talking about how advances in the field of additive manufacturing and computer modeling became the key to the very existence of Son of Blackbird in reality. Not just on paper, but now in reality. The main arsenal of the SR-72 will almost certainly be hypersonic missiles, which are actively being developed by the American military as we speak. Some would rightly argue that because of the enormous pressure and heat of releasing or launching hypersonic missiles in high-speed flight, Lockheed would face a number of engineering challenges. However, it was they who previously proved the viability of the idea of successfully launching air-to-air -air missiles at speeds above Mach 3 using YF-12 interceptor prototypes. But if you think innovation at this scale is easy, think again. The technical challenges are simply immense. Creating an aircraft that can survive and function at sustained hypersonic velocities requires overcoming extreme temperatures, unique air pressure conditions, and severe structural strain. At the heart of the SR-72's capability is its game-changing engine, the turbine-based combined cycle TBCC propulsion system. No single engine can operate efficiently at both subsonic and hypersonic speeds. That's why the SR-72 uses a hybrid system, a conventional jet engine for low speeds and a scramjet for speeds above Mach 5. How does it work? The turbine lifts the aircraft off the ground and carries it through the lower atmosphere. As the aircraft climbs and accelerates, the scramjet takes over to power it into hypersonic speeds. This smooth transition is incredibly difficult and is one of the main reasons hypersonic aircraft are so rare. The engineering required to manage this transition is complex. As the aircraft accelerates, the incoming air becomes so fast and hot that it would destroy a traditional jet engine. So the turbine must be completely shut down and bypassed, allowing the scramjet to take over. The scramjet itself has no moving parts and relies on the aircraft's extreme velocity to compress air for combustion. Maintaining stable combustion in this environment, where air flows inside the engine at several times the speed of sound, is like trying to light a match in a hurricane. Propulsion challenges aren't the only things worth mentioning. The SR-72 must also survive intense aerodynamic heating. At hypersonic speeds, the friction between the aircraft and the atmosphere produces temperatures high enough to melt conventional materials. Engineers are turning to advanced composites and heat-resistant alloys, many still in development, to build the SR-72's airframe. Every inch of the aircraft must endure not just the heat, but also the expansion and contraction caused by repeated high-speed flights. Now, it is agreed how awesome it is that the U.S. will be able to send a hypersonic surveillance or attack capability to nearly anywhere on the planet in less time than it takes to deliver a parcel. But regardless of all the mind-blowing potential of the plane, the SR-72 is not yet complete. The funding has always remained the biggest hurdle. Although there is convergence with the U.S. Air Force's hypersonic roadmap, the full-scale development of the aircraft and the engine remains to be adequately funded. Initially, the Air Force took interest and is still interested in the SR-72, but the Air Force declined to fund the program. Facing budget constraints, the service chose instead to develop the Northrop Grumman RQ-180 Stealth UAV, anticipated to be less costly and complex to design and produce for ISR missions in contested airspace. Skeptics had their own side of the story. In February 2018, Orlando Carvalho, executive vice president of aeronautics at Lockheed Martin, refuted reports of the SR-72's development, stating that no such aircraft had been produced. He added that hypersonic research was driving weapons development. 
According to him, as that technology matured, it could ultimately enable the development of a reusable vehicle. Prior to this, we may have referred to it as a, like an SR-72, but now the terminology of choice is reusable vehicle. But ignoring skeptics, in November 2018, Lockheed Martin reported that a prototype of the SR-72 was scheduled to fly by 2025 and would be equipped to launch hypersonic missiles. Yes, apparently, it was initially assumed that testing of the single-engine SR-72 prototype would begin in 2025. But now the operational readiness is presently targeted for 2030, all things being equal. To be honest, the likelihood cannot be ascertained as there are still enormous technological obstacles to be overcome. Sustained hypersonic travel produces temperatures that would melt most existing materials. To counter some of the challenges, new heat-resistant materials and cutting-edge composites are being tested. But the SR-72 has to do more than just hold up. It has to survive intense conditions for long periods, essentially flying through fire. So why all the urgency now? Why is hypersonic flight suddenly a top priority? The answer is global competition. Both China and Russia are already experimenting with hypersonic weapons and glide vehicles. If the U.S. doesn't keep pace, it risks falling behind, not just technologically, but strategically. The SR-72 isn't just a fast plane. See it as a bold move to the U.S. government to maintain American air dominance for decades to come. It's a message. We're still here, we're still ready, and we're still faster. The SR-72 isn't just about speed. It goes beyond that. It's about shrinking the reaction window. Hours would be turned into minutes. Data would be collected and action would be taken before the enemy can even respond. A machine this fast turns reconnaissance and retaliation into a single act, leaving the enemy guessing and command chain scrambling. But with that power comes new risks. The SR-72 isn't just a military asset. It can be said to be a diplomatic wildcard. Its existence alone, even though it's yet to be confirmed, shifts conversations in Beijing, Moscow, and other strategic capitals. As to whether the plane is already existing and flying in 2025, the Pentagon isn't saying anything, and maybe that's the point. Whether it's in testing or already operational, its shadow is doing the job. It keeps competitors looking over their shoulders, wondering what's out there and when they might see it for real. As 2025 approaches, the world waits to find out whether the U.S. and Lockheed Martin can turn one of aviation's most ambitious ideas into reality and usher in the next era of flight. Also, it should be noted that while many sources refer to the highly secretive SR-72 project by the moniker Dark Star, this is actually inaccurate. While no official nickname has been applied to the craft, one of the most commonly used is Son of Blackbird. Interestingly, the process for assigning nicknames to military aircraft, like the F-15 Eagle, typically involves a combination of historical tradition, practical considerations, and protocols set by the military or the aircraft's manufacturer. However, this is usually conducted once an Air Force officially accepts an aircraft. Dark Star is also the name of the top-secret supersonic jet featured in the film Top Gun Maverick, released in 2022. However, while that craft is fantasy, it is true that Lockheed Martin did build a mock-up of Dark Star for the film. This prop was 69.5 feet long, with a wingspan of 5.5 feet. Some of its parts, including the instruments and flight stick inside the cockpit, were prototypes from Lockheed Martin. The mock-up was used to film the ground scene and as a reference for the visual effects team to work on the aerial scene. An F-18 was used for takeoff and flight sequences, which were later replaced by a digitally created Dark Star. Despite the immense hurdles, Lockheed Martin Skunk Works Division continues to push forward, driven by the enormous strategic edge the SR-72 offers. With the potential to reach anywhere in the world within an hour, the aircraft could completely redefine how nations think about reconnaissance and rapid response missions. If successfully deployed, the SR-72 will not just be a new plane, it will be the dawn of a new era in military aviation. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.